It is I, hello, I'm Hedwig. And there I have a lovely person on the couch. Hi, I'm Mats, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm going to show you Ukulele and the Impossible Air. It's the second game by the developer Playtonic Games, who uh, did games reminiscent of the rare era of gaming, which is my favorite era of gaming. And before I can start, I have to ask Tech, where are we with the bid war? 8-Bit has won. We're sitting at $10 versus free for normal. All right, so I will enable the alternative 8-Bit level music, which got added in a patch, um, and it was actually made by, I believe, just a fan of the game, who was like, hey, I like 8-Bit music, I make good 8-Bit music, uh, and, and made an entire album of like the entire game's level music, and eventually it got added to the game. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna head into the main menu and we're about to um, start a run. I'm gonna explain everything along the way and whenever you feel like asking me something interesting and not falling asleep, you may very much do that. Also to the chat, you can always ask me if you want to know anything or I explain something terribly and you want to scream at me. Why bees? Why bees? I will not answer that. <laughs> Okay, so we got our fresh save file. As, as you saw, I got a few here, but uh, we obviously start... How do you poach an egg? I don't know, I'm vegan. <laughs> so, let's start in three, two, one, go! Bada boom! All right, impossible, there it is. Unlike the first game, which was uh, like a spiritual successor to the Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie games, this one is more uh, shifted towards like uh, following up on the 2D games that Rare used to make back in the days in the Super Nintendo era. I will not mention what kind of uh, game this is a spiritual successor to. The chat will have to find that out on their own. It's a little mystery you guys can solve now if you want. Is it Banjo? Yes, exactly. Banjo is the 2D platformer oh, yeah. this game is inspired by. Anyways, uh, Right away here we have this little tutorial ar area which I can just really talk over because it's just some slow movement and nothing really to do during it. Um, and while I do that I can explain the game's base mechanics. So we jump, we roll, uh, we complete levels, uh, that's it. That's all we do. Whenever we um, touch the ground we get uh, pulled back to uh, at max rolling speed. Um, which uh, we usually want to maintain. Sometimes we can actually get faster than rolling speed, then we don't want to touch the ground as much, or at least always uh, keep the roll while doing it. Um, let's see if I can get a little thing here. No, I don't. Well, that's frame perfect, so it's not bad. Um, and it doesn't really matter because it's not actual time safe. Uh, Does it, it entirely reset your momentum once you hit the ground, or is it gradually? It's gradually. As, as longer that we touch the ground, uh, the, the slower we get, uh, and like the more we get pulled back towards uh, normal walking speed. Um, so yeah, this, is, this here is a little thing showing us, oh, we have those bees around us now, and look what bees do, they can grant you invincibility, or not actual invincibility, but each time you get hit, one of your bees dies. So... We're actually gonna go right ahead into the very final level of the game after this little cutscene here. And the very final level of the game uh, is accessible right from the start. It's gonna throw us in there right away here. And if I was to complete the very final level in one go now, that would be like an any percent run, the shortest ver possible version of an any percent run. What we do today is called 24 Bs. Um, 24 Bs is also an any percent category but with the extra rule that we have to collect 24 bees before entering and finishing the very final level. Um, that means we're gonna go all across the overworld of this game, um, we're gonna go into 16 of the levels of this game, because in the overworld there's 8 bees we can collect, and um, there's actually 40 uh, bees in levels, but we only need 16 of those because the overworld bees are very, very fast and we just uh, need to enter 16 actual levels. 
to to get those uh, to get to those 24 before we can enter the final level. Also, there I just died, but uh, I'm not gonna bother making the joke for like a tenth time that I'm shown this run now. Oh no, I oh died no. accidentally. Oh, oh. Is that supposed to happen? Is that fast? Yeah. Because yeah. that was the final level and we're not doing an any percent run here and trying to complete the level because uh, it wouldn't actually get us anywhere if I tried to get far in the level now because yeah, no. We'll just do it later in a fast version with uh, damage boosts available. Actually, what I forgot to uh, say about the bees, each bee we collect along the way is one hit we're allowed to take in the very final level of the game. Um, meaning with 24 we can take quite a few damage boosts <laughs> or unintentional hits. I'm gonna definitely go for a lot of them, but first let's uh, actually go into some levels and collect some bees. Zed is currently learning this run, that is a lie. No, he, he smiled. That that means he means it. <laughs> so, um, okay, very good, Hedwig. Already lost my momentum, but I can get it back. So whenever um, we want to get the fastest uh, to the fastest speed possible, I'll do a little ground pound and roll jump out of the ground pound because the less time I touch the ground. Uh, doing a roll, the less time I will uh, get pulled back to like the maximum speed we're allowed to maintain for for a time. So we always want to do that little move to get maximum speed when we enter a new screen, and then try to maintain the speed as far as possible by whenever we touch the ground, immediately rolling or jumping. Okay, yeah, I didn't get the super speedy strat there. There we can jump off of the water if we did a twirl twill before. No reason for that whatsoever, but it's just how it works. And you may already be seeing that I'm carrying a little berry around with me uh, that fits right into Yuka's mouth. Uh, totally not problematic how he carries that. But um, yeah, we will try to throw it at the end of the level because the end of the level is always a little glass beehive and it can not only be rolled into but we can also throw things at it so sometimes we don't even have to reach it with our own body but just throw stuff at it to free the bee oh like we did there we can also use that in the overworld and we will later um just as a little spoiler already i'm the runner i I yeah. may do everything. <laughs> S still put up spoiler <laughs> warnings. It's no, no spoiler warnings. Yeah, that up there is the entrance into the impossible air. We're only going to visit that after collecting 23 more bees. Chat, you are a very, welco very welcome to at any point uh, throw stupid bee puns at me in chat or in donations, by the way. So we're going to use some platforms to reach an area we would also be able to reach normally. <laughs> But he it's faster this way. Now we're out of bounds. <laughs> he even started with, with the B puns right there. So, we <laughs> yeah, I did. Whenever I say the word to be, <laughs> that's a B pun. Uh, so, yeah, we're out of bounds again. Look, we're under the world now. Oh, where, where are we? I'm going to move without seeing my character. And now we're under the level. <laughs> now we're in a water plane under the level. <laughs> uh good thing is, I, I know where all the things under the level are, and I fell. I apparently don't know where everything under the level is. Uh, what I want to do there is a so-called air swim, which works pretty much in the way that um, whenever we touch water, uh, our player character, Yuka, <laughs> wow, I just said that in a really stupid way, um, Yuka always tries to reach the surface of the water again. Like, he always goes up. He, he, he never wants to go, like, to stay beneath the water surface. So, uh, when we're under the level, uh, the ground is actually solid. And inside that solid ground, um, like, we can't go through the ground from below. That's what I'm trying to say. We're in the water plane below the ground, and we'll always swim upwards towards the ground plane. Like you see there, our eyes, our, our, our uh, ears actually stick through the ground a little bit sometimes. And we actually use that to swim all the way 
uh, from like the beginning of the game to um, a place rather late in the game and we wouldn't usually be able to ever leave this air swim except we hit a loading trigger and that's what I'm gonna do move just a slight bit I have to be really cautious here to not move too far up or I'm gonna be soft locked <laughs> um, so yeah this is where I'll try to hit the load trigger nice here we go nice air swim done sequence broken um, we're so after completing level 1-1 we're now in the hub around level 10-1 uh, little out of bounds here to get to this lever early um, that's actually a mechanic I didn't talk about yet uh, every level has a second uh, side this is this um, I'm entering now is chapter 10-2 whenever we do something in the overworld to alter the tome the level is based in um, we can we can access a second version of the same level which is usually just like a very very different level it's like a proper second level it's not like just a re revamped uh, level uh, what I try to do here is a rope zip I try to that was pretty good actually I didn't think I'd get a second try but I fell <laughs> so it was not good after all um, we try to okay get one on the wrong side um, we try to press the, um, the 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 jump button on the same frame that we uh, nice that worked I'm out of bounds <laughs> we try to press the jump button on the same frame that we uh, grabbed the rope after uh, after jumping off of it which for some weird reason gives us a little zip uh, which which is speed is based on um, the frame rate we're playing on I'm now playing on 60 FPS which uh, makes it easier for me to g actually get the zip because hey frame perfection blah um, is harder on more frames um, but yeah it also gives us a little less speed which makes it more accessible to actually know where I have to do the ground pound to not fully just zip mile wide out of bounds because that wouldn't be in our best interest <laughs> he did it again <laughs> I just looked up bee puns online and <laughs> I'm honestly terrified about how terrible they are <laughs> okay let's read some of the best I see here that would be very unheard of to be or not to be what do you call a bee that lives in America a USB Funny you say that, Moon Toon. I'm not gonna use the trick in this run because it's not very marathon safe, but we actually have a trick in the speedrun community of this game called USB, which is based around <laughs> unplugging the controller 24 times during the run. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would have to do that for a PB. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna boil your guys' brains. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, no, it's actually funny because after we collect each bee, there's a little portion of the game where the game takes control over the character away from us and gives us a little cutscene where the bee flies to the impossible lair and is then ready to be used in, like, our impossible lair attempts. And that part is structured, like, very 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 plainly talking um, there's a flag for a point in time where the game takes away control from us and if no controller is connected during the part where it wants to take away control from us it never takes away control from us so we disconnect the controller and then right after the point where the game would usually take away control from us we connect it back in and we can move during the cutscene <laughs> And yeah, that saves a little time. Uh, uh, that saves a little time each time we would do it. But yeah, it also, like, once we do it, we can never access the pause menu again or the map, which we want to use for teleports. We can actually use it during USB, but we only have a very, very short time frame while the map is active on screen each time. 
And if you miss it one time, uh, the, the, the uh, save file is actually broken and we can never get back and do it and never really finish the run the intended way. So not a marathon save strat. We won't do that. Um, this series will be located in the overworld, like I said. Uh, we just have to find those. I think four of those are hidden and four of those are usually supposed to be accessed by finding a secret exit in levels. But we don't need any of those secret exits and levels because we can just maneuver our way around the overworld and usually just get everywhere we want anyways. One thing that uh, usually keeps us from progressing in the game is what you're going to see in a bit. Uh, Trouser, our lovely snake in pants over here, put up those walls, those gates you see in the bottom right there. Those are called paywalls and we usually need to collect some coins um, in order to uh, get him to lower them. We don't actually lower any of them in the run because we don't need it. We can just go <laughs> anywhere we want. You see, this part of the map is not even unlocked yet, but we're there. I mean, technically you can quick travel, right? We can quick travel and we will use that a few times, but we can't actually quick travel anywhere uh, where the map is not unlocked yet. So we can, in this run, we can only ever quick travel to levels one or two. <laughs> Also, this here was called Desert Out of Bounds. <laughs> and we're collecting yet another um, yet another Overworld B. This time, one of those which we would usually be supposed to enter uh, a secret exit of a level for. Build some walls. I don't know, man. I don't know. game. Okay, yeah, we hit the switch and then we uh, enter this level. This here, you see, is now flipped upside down. So it's actually like the level that would have been there, but flipped upside down. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. Generally, like the whole, every level has like a flip side, essentially. So there's one way to trigger like a different version of a level. And those are very cool retakes or takes on the level. And it's kind of wild to think about like, there's a base idea for a level, but you do something in the overworld and that changes the entire level. And it's just, honestly, casually, a lot of fun to do. Okay, now I'm back on my cycles. I was very uh, confused there for a moment. Let's go. Also, the music in this level is a banger. I've actually never listened to the 8-bit soundtrack. I actually like the normal soundtrack a little bit more, but hey. Same for the me. The donations have spoken. Exactly. Cycles, cycles, cycles. Speaking of donations, do we have a moment? Absolutely, we do. All right, because we did get another uh, $5 donation from Seth saying, I will never forget Hedrick's legendary any percent run from Speedcon 2020. One day, I will finish learning this, this run. Maybe. I mean... That was amazing, like... Oh, no, I died. That wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Yeah, it's been 2020. <laughs> yeah. That existed. It was wild. One of the wildest endings to any marathon you could just imagine. Alright, yeah, le let's see myself just finishing this level off. Um, yeah, I sadly don't have the um, the bomb anymore. Okay, now I also lost Laylee. So Laylee basically works like Baby Mario in Yoshi's Island. You may know that. Um, basically, when we get hit, Lay like we have one hit we can take in every level before we die. Laylee will fly around. We can collect her back or um, just not. But if we don't collect Laylee back, we cannot ground pawn anymore, we cannot do fast rolls anymore, so we never really want to lose Laylee, and if we lose Laylee, uh, we want to catch her back. Um, so yeah, that's my first teleport right here, right to chapter 2, because we're going to do the out of bounds from the beginning one more time. This time skipping another paywall and going... Um, right into this beach section, which is one of the later sections of the game, and enter chapter 17. <laughs> this level uh, might help you guys in chat find out what this game is slightly reminiscent of. <laughs> it has mechanics you might have seen before. 
Yeah, I do remember this from... Uh... Banjo-Kazooie, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Banjo and Tooie. Oh, yeah. Banjo-Tooie and the... Nuts and bolts. <laughs> Banjo-Tooie, nuts and bolts, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry for all, all the people I just offended with that. <laughs> so yeah, this level is actually really fast. We can keep our momentum a lot through the level. Uh, okay. I didn't actually want to do that. <laughs> now I lost Laylee and I don't know... No, I can actually just do it casually here, I guess. And just not get hit from here. <laughs> I'm not used to not getting hit from here. Because I usually uh, take some damage boosts, but I guess if I take it slow, we can do it. This here is rather tight. Okay, yeah, level done. Wasn't too terrible. <laughs> but usually we want to take a damage boost somewhere in the end there to not wait for the rotating enemy cycles. But yeah. Oh, hey, look at that nice number of clothes I collected. Is that I th think you play the game like two times, three times, and... I think at this point, like, how many runs did you do with this? I think, it, like, isn't this, like, your most or second most uh, played speed game? So we're gonna talk to our little uh, friend here. He's called Rodney because he likes fishing. Haha. <laughs> and he lost his fishing rod, actually. And we told him where it is, and we're gonna go uh, visit him there later. I accidentally took a little detour here. Let's take this flaming berry over to a bush here, which we want to burn in order to get this um, bomb berry to destroy a can sand castle. Some kid uh, crafted because <laughs> we hate children. <laughs> no, we don't. We like children. We actually want to save children. So, <laughs> there is an out of bounds I can do in this level before I talk myself into more problems. <laughs> so, about that out of bounds. About that out of bounds, look at this platform. Bada boom, hey, I'm out of bounds. Now we can uh, just skip a door transition here because the door that would lead us into this area is literally just uh, like there's a door, then there's a wall, and then there's the door the where it would get us. <laughs> and yeah, we can just jump over like the wall, uh, keeping us from going there right away. That so, makes yeah. me kind of question, why is there a door transition in the first place? Because it's two separate areas of the level, don't question it. <laughs> I, I see. Okay. I try to take a little jump off of there, roll under two of those. Take a high jump from there, let's go. That level was pretty nice. I usually fail this one a lot in runs and lose Laylee at some point and then go super slowly through the rest of the level because there's, uh, whenever we lose Laylee and don't manage to catch her back, there's actually bells uh, scattered around the levels where we can like, that we can ring and then Laylee comes back to us for whatever reason, like she's our pet, even though she's not. Really weird. Um, I'm gonna do something fun now. I'm gonna um, hit this switch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hit this switch and then roll up this ramp, <laughs> bada boom. It uh, actually gives us a lot of momentum uh, vertically and we can just jump up this place and get to this overworld B that usually the game wants to require us to uh, use a secret exit to get teleported here. But hey, like I said, we use none of those. And also by uh, hitting the switch, we changed the level we just did from horizontal to vertical. So hey, let's play the same level again, but in vertical. As you can see in the background, <laughs> everything's a little flipped here. Also, that jump I did there in the beginning of the level was what we call a delayed uh, tail twirl jump. <laughs> um, basically, you guys know when you play platformers and you jump off of an enemy, you usually have a little bit of a time frame where you can press the jump button again while jumping off of the enemy and you get a little bit of extra height, right? In this game, we also have that, but it, it kind of works a different way. When we don't press anything, we get our characters uh, just doing a 
rather low jump off of uh, the enemy. And when we do press A, we get our normal jump height in height uh, off of the enemy. But when we wait for the little hop off of an enemy without pressing jump, and then while we're already in the air from the base hop, uh, we can get the hop plus our jump height in height. And when we press tail twirl in the same frame as we press the jump, we can actually get some stupid crazy height, which I don't know why it works for. Uh, but we get it, and so we use it to jump some vertical, uh, jump up some vertical spaces where the game doesn't actually want us to be yet. Here I can do some pre-jumps because I know where the platforms are gonna land. That's also fun. Look at that. Good smiley. We want to go there. Good smiley. We want to go there. And uh, closing in on the end of the level. Let's go. Where are we? About the halfway point of the bees, or I think we're at B number Close. ten or eleven. That should be eleven. But I honestly lost track. Yeah, no, that's. I'm, I'm uh, just focusing on not falling away. asleep. <laughs> yeah. Actually, nice. yes, I'm fighting. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. 15-2, Turbine Trouble title. As you can see, the tide came in as we destroyed the sand castle. And the level is flooded now. Um, this is another good example of using a ramp and a lot of speed to build some crazy vertical momentum. That's a pattern through the game. We can jump over the barrier that keeps us from exiting the level here. I hit the water plane from outside of the level and just as in the overworld when we hit a water plane uh, we will keep our swimming state until we hit the surface of water. And since there's no surface here, <laughs> we hit the water plane from out of bounds, we enter swimming state and we never leave swimming state. So we can just swim around the entire level from the outside. Good times. The music is very relaxing. It is, isn't it? It's dangerous. <laughs> All right, after this B, we have yet another overworld B, which I actually think is probably the hardest one to collect casually because it requires one to understand coyote jumps, which I don't think is a super casual, casual thing to know. Like understanding that in a lot of platformers you can roll off of a cliff and then still use your jump. Um, which we would obviously know from Donkey Kong Country type games, but I, I think it's not a crazy casual thing to know, but it requires it to actually reach this B. Um, now we're gonna teleport back to level 1. We completed the desert area, we completed the beach area, and look who we found here! It's Rodney! He found his fishing rod! And look what he... <laughs> look what he caught in level 1! The entire city! <laughs> Uh-oh. Now we enter 1-2, which is level 1, but with chaos. <laughs> It sounds good. Yes. Look, town has been destroyed. Rodney, what have you done? Well, he went fishing. Yeah, destroying an entire town. What? Can't do that. Well, he just did. Okay. Also, very beautiful level. Okay, uh, we can jump right over here with the right momentum and from here I'll try to keep my momentum through the rest of the level pretty much until we hit the underground area. It's pretty easy actually. Oh, in the underground area we have another one of those uh, jumps off the water surface, if I do it correctly. I have to do that, do that, and then jump on the surface, so we don't actually ever have to swim in the water, allowing us to keep our rolling speed. 
Okay, we can get some extra speed. Uh, I don't like that I lost Laylee there, but I can play... No, wait. I, I will take that save point, just in case. Yeah, just in case one of those bullets is doing anything uh, funky. We did it. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. Woo! I love my crowd. I'm very energetic, I know. <laughs> Alright, coming up on the, um, the first paywall of the game, which actually only requires us to collect one coin. Uh, but we're not collecting that one coin. We don't like collecting coins. We actually just skip it using this lovely fence over there. Let's try again. Yeah, now we are over. And we're actually now in the area where the game would usually <laughs> uh, teach us how changing states of levels works. This is chapter 4. Chapter 4, 1 um, is frantic fountains. Look at all those lovely f water fountains in here. And after we're gonna have this level completed, which is actually the shortest level in the entire run. I think it's only 52 seconds or something. Um, we will actually meet Queen Phoebe again from the beginning of the game. I, I don't know if I ever <laughs> introduced her <laughs> as a character. Mm, uh, no. Yeah, Im unimportant. Um, just the quest giver, basically. Um, uh, and she teaches us, oh look, there's an ice berry, you can throw it at the level and then the water will be frozen. And hey, then all those fountains are frozen. <laughs> yeah, short level, like I said, everything a little cycle based, but it's rather easy to get through all of those without too crazy of uh, strategies. Now we um, have to watch a little cutscene for like 30 seconds, so in case there's anything fun to plug, now would be a very good time. Absolutely. We unfortunately don't have any donations at the moment, but for you all the viewers at home, we can keep raising that donation counter, right? We're sitting at $205.20, and I think we can do a lot more. Especially with all these bit wars and incentives we have open. Do we have time to plug these? Sure. All right, so coming up in actually at the run right after, if my uh, mouse would work, if I could scroll up, that'd be amazing. Uh, we have the bit war for the Digimon Walt uh, free starter. Uh, Kotamon is still in the lead with $25, and Kumamon is still trading that with $21. But Monmon also now in the race with $4.20. So get your donations in for that. That's a pretty good number. Oh yeah. Oh, look at me not having max speed anymore. Uh, well, I want to have max speed for this next part. Uh, yes, if I can keep it, I can jump across here. Yes, nice. It's actually not super easy of a jump, but if I wouldn't get it, I wouldn't have max speed uh, until here, basically. And that would lose a lot of time, and I don't like losing time. I can do another ground pound here to destroy the ice and not fall down. And look, oh, down there is where the original level ended, but the alternate version of the level actually keeps going here, because that uh, icy fountain is in the way. And hey, we get a little additional slide section on ice, because hey, who doesn't like slide sections? Slides are actually super buggy in this game, like you saw there. Sometimes um, there's even a possibility of taking damage in one of the last areas of the very final level, which we call meme damage, because there's literally no way to prevent it. Sometimes. Yuka just behaves as if there was a little bump in the in the road and just for whatever reason doesn't go horizontally but like stumbles across a bump. That's wild. Yeah, it's really stupid and we don't understand why. It's I don't know, it's meme damage if you take it. And it's really, really bad for any person <laughs> runs. I was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. So you just perform perfect run and then you just die to Yes. Literally RNG. Yes. That isn't funny. But other than that, this game is really, really, really uh, empty of RNG, which is good. I mean, it's as a, a very fun game to, to play, I, I, I want to say. Yeah, I, I would totally say. 
it's one of the most enjoyable 2D platformers in the past few years that has been released, in my personal opinion. I enjoyed it a lot. I can recommend it to everyone who likes this type of games. Very good. Alright, I have to do Paywall 1 skip again, because there was actually no way out of that area unless, uh, like, except for teleporting out of it. That's intentional, though. So, we just unlocked uh, the second version of the level we're about to do now. In this level, I want you guys to listen to the music and tell me if it reminds you of any game. Because I have an opinion on what this reminds me of, but I'm gonna be quiet. I will, I will close my eyes and listen. Okay, and now I'm not in the area anymore where that music plays that I personally think uh, reminds me of a game. Do we have anyone in chat who wants to say if it reminds them of anything? Or, I mean, maybe I'm yet again alone on Mutha. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I heard All Star in there. All Star? Wow. That's interesting. Probably just my brain pranking me. Yeah, I, I personally feel like it sounds a lot like uh, the Skyward Sword music. <laughs> Skyloft, I think, actually. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I never had anyone would say the same. <laughs> I would have to listen to that again to confirm that. Hey, we're almost <laughs> there. Okay, Floa Flo doesn't agree with me. Dang. We have a Skyward Sword runner right here telling me no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's not similar. <laughs> yes, but uh, no. Alright, here's the same level again, but with enemies chasing us. Fun thing, we're so fast we don't actually see the enemies chasing us. <laughs> no, we actually see some, like on the top of the screen right there. Or In the end, some are not actually chasing us, but running towards us. Oh, there was another little bump in the ground. What is the game doing to me? I already got two bumps in places that I never had them before. Game, what are you doing? Okay, from here I'm gonna try to keep some of this rope's momentum. All the way over here. Then do a delayed uh, jump to get up there super quickly. Oh, actually when I'm climbing ropes you'll sometimes see me jumping them up instead of just climbing because if I do it correctly it's technically a little faster. Here I try to push myself. Yeah, nice. Try to get my ground pound roll um, to start right below a corner of the plank there, <laughs> which for some reason gives me bonus momentum. Here I'm gonna lose Laylee on purpose because I don't care and I just jumped against that rope. It wasn't actually on purpose. But it wasn't that bad. It's just two seconds of time loss or something, so we don't care. Alright, now we can actually um, use a very, very, very easy <laughs> strat to uh, sequence break into the next area. That lovely character over there, the octopus lady, Dr. Puzz, um, leaves this place and we can just jump on the lever, wow, and go here. <laughs> I'm gonna try to snipe an overworld bee. Wow, I hit it! Oh my Ooh. god! I get that like 1 in 20 tries or something. <laughs> okay, that saved like 2 seconds. <laughs> Super important. Those are two seconds. That's the two seconds yeah, you just that's lost. the two seconds that are gonna make me world record today. No, I won't. But yeah, you see those berries here in the overworld that... Wh what? What did I do? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I want to take it here and um, because yeah, we're gonna enter this level here now, and later we're gonna need some of those berries to actually um, to to do a little bomb jump. But I'm gonna explain that as I'm reaching it. Okay, yeah, failed that strat, but we're just gonna go through the first screen casually then. That's not too bad. In the second stream, in the second room, wow, words. I wanna hit an enemy in a rather specific way. Let's see if I can do that. I didn't. Well, okay, a little slower then. That's okay though, okay. We're still on pace for the same platform. Yeah, nice, okay. Didn't really do anything bad. I'm gonna take that berry with us again up to the end of the level. This screen actually has preci very precisely yeah, <laughs> very precisely uh, positioned platforms that we could actually have done a jump at full speed right through a little gap there, but it's really, really precise. Uh, let's see if I can do this still. No, I can't. <laughs> Never mind. At least there's a safe. Didn't happen. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna wait for the platforms. There is a possible cycle skip here for one platform cycle, but I haven't done it in a while and I, I figured let's just wing it. <laughs> this place is cool. No, it's not. Uh, the ceiling is actually not really existent there. I could have jumped right over that spider while it's sitting at the top of the ceiling, but yeah, I didn't manage to do it in time. Auto-scrollers. Fun times. I'm really glad we don't have a lot of auto scrollers in the 24 B's run. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have run it. <laughs> All right, right through here, right through here, into this door, and we're at the end of the level, and we're actually at B number 19 or 20 or something. 20. Not too many to go. At least I think it's 20. Two of the ones we're collecting, yeah, 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 oh, it's actually 20. Two of the ones we're collecting after this are also Overworld Beasts, so only two levels until the very final level. Woo, crazy, right? It's, it's insane. Because so it now, now I actually got to count a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm counting the ticks of the bomb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Nice. Uh, I have to jump on a specific tick there on the 24th and then if the bomb explodes while I'm in the air it gives me just a little bit of extra height so I can actually get pushed onto the fence there and do another sequence break and we like sequence breaks. That's actually a hit we can not really get around so it's not bad. Uh, this, uh, fun fact about this level, the cycles in this level with stuff we moved, like those things, don't actually reset when we press the restart button in the menu. So whenever we want to grind this level as an IL or just for practice, we have to press start, go back to the hub and just re-enter the entire level. It's terrible. Never got fixed. Very convenient. Okay, yeah, these cycles here can be a little tough, like the, the platforms there can be a little tough to hit while on maximum speed, but it's possible. Yeah, I'm not gonna take the maximum possible speed there because I would likely fall and die. But I'm still gonna take the second fastest strat, which lets us jump across all of this, and then we're at the end. Let's go. I like this little jingle at the end. I sadly can't wait to press A to proceed through the menu until my favorite song of the game starts, but <laughs> you guys will just have to play the game yourself if you want to hear that. It's a little B choir singing uh, the tune of the original ukulele game. I love it. Okay, let me try it again. Let's get some hide off that button, let's go. This allows us to not go all the way uh, around those little vent character thingies, wind tunnel whatevers, um, and just jump across all of it to get this hidden bee. 
Now we're at 22. So one more level and one more overworld bee? Exactly. The overworld bee is actually a tad bit risky because there's platforms along the way that if I do something stupid, they can fall over and uh, I'm not able to actually reach them anymore without doing the secret exit of the level, which takes forever. So I gotta be a little bit cautious. Plus, if I fall down anywhere along the way of the little platforming uh, sequence, I cannot go back up. But there's a little backup, it'll cost me like a second or two. This little uh, thing over here, I'm just gonna knock it over just in case. <laughs> uh, marathon safety and stuff, you know. And now I'll try and do it and probably do it first try. <laughs> And just have lost time by going for safety strats. It's fine. Better to be. Safe. No, I actually fell off. Oh my god, it's worth it. No, I, I guess. <laughs> well, I failed, but I also made use of my safety strat. Well, what's better? I don't know. I mean, you can be happy about the fact that you prepared for that. Yeah, I definitely am. Otherwise, I would have had to plug in another level which would add like two minutes or so to the run okay yeah we just maneuver around all of those platforms here we're not actually supposed to maneuver around but it worked like you see that little swirly thing to the left there that's uh, usually where we could get out of the secret exit of the level but yeah secret levels are for casuals Look at this, we jump right into chapter 7-1, our final level of the game before the impossible lair. And yeah, this one's rather cycle-based again as well, so not really anything crazy happening except for this beginning part, starting here, where we try to build up as much momentum as possible and then jump right up there, nice. That was another one of those delayed jumps I explained earlier. Here we can build up speed once more a little bit, but from here it's all just uh, very cycle based and auto scrolly. So, yeah, nothing fancy happening now. Would this be a perfect moment then? Sure! Alright, uh, two things. Uh, I have been informed by Tech that there is a $26 donation, if I'm calculating this right, uh, that is actually unallocated to the Mon Mon uh, choice in Digimon World 3. So Mon Mon was in the lead with $30.20. I say was because we also got a $10 donation from Hapkan and Name. <laughs> We've come in to counter the monk back to the Ken the Master, I guess it goes. <laughs> so that puts Kotamon back at uh, in the lead with $35 for the Digimon World 3 starters. So it is, that bit was heating up. And that is the next run, so you still have 20 minutes or so to get your donations in for that. So keep on donating, folks. We want to see that bit more. Oh wow, how did I get hit there? Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for the donations. That's really, really amazing. Yep. Thanks for supporting a good cause. Alright. Uh, as I'm closing in on the end of this level, I will tell you guys a little bit about the impossible air. Well, the impossible air which this game is named after, ha, huh, is the final level of the game, and it's a little gauntlet of four platforming sections and four boss fights. Kinda, like, it's separated into four sections, basically, each starting with a boss fight and then having a platforming section right after it. Um, I, like, we are technically able to not get hit during the entire layer, but it's, uh, it's hard. It's really hard. Uh, I like to have my 24 Bs uh, when I enter it. It's uh, more fun this way because both I can take uh, I can take hits, I can actually use damage boosts, um, and it's also a little bit safer and I won't immediately die. And not dying generally is something I enjoy in my speedruns. I took an unnecessary hit there. So whenever... Uh, I take a hit and I didn't tell you guys I want to take a hit, it's probably not intended. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna play the impossible air a little bit safer than if I was to play for a PB, but I'll still go for some of the damage boost strats because hey, we can't be 
slow, right? That, for example, is one that I want to take. Let's go through here. Alrighty, here we have to wait for the cycle anyways. I mean, I could technically go for like three damage boosts here, but it's stupid for like a second of time save or something. Oh yeah, I didn't want to get hit there. I didn't want to get hit there, oh my god. Now the nerves are kicking in. So, here I'm not gonna take the damage boost. I'm actually not sure, why is that spider not moving yet? Well, whatever, I'm just gonna jump past it. I forgot how that spider moves. I don't enjoy this too much. <laughs> well, now I don't wanna lose any more bees in this. Uh no, actually I'm gonna take this damage boost because it looks fun. <laughs> I couldn't not do it, come on. We can jump right past those guys. We can do... Oh, I could have pressed A there immediately. It's not too bad. I didn't want to fall there. Oh, hey, nice. It puts me forward. <laughs> Thank you, game. Another one. Okay. That's fewer bees than I feel comfortable <laughs> with for uh, losing in the for losing in the first part. Well, doesn't matter. I'll just have to get good. Not like the second platforming area of this uh, is actually the hard part. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Capital B. Do your hits. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Nothing bad happened. Nobody saw that. Good thing is, we at some point got a patch in the game that um, allows us to actually start the impossible there from checkpoints. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit less during the impossible air now because I feel like I actually should focus. You are allowed to talk though if you feel like saying anything. Er, er, both of you. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, focus time for me. I can plug to charity if you want. Nice, let's go, charity. Uh, yeah, so. We're not just doing this for, well, obviously we are doing this for a lot of the fun here, but we're also just here raising a lot of money for Save the Children, which is an amazing charity. They do lots of, lots of work related to, you know, saving children, making sure that children around the world aren't, you know, dying from life-threatening diseases. Uh, speaking of that, if you think $1, do $1 donations don't make it, don't make, don't do anything, uh, $1 donation to serve the children that can provide a child with treatment against pneumonia. I'm gonna need help pronouncing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no clue on that side. But it is a life threatening illness, and you've heard of it. I'm just pronouncing it wrong. So even if you just have a dollar to spare, then that will be amazing. And you can put it towards one of our incentives or it worse. So we still have lots of these open. You can check the uh, the tracker for that. And if you have a little bit more, if you have a little bit more to spend, uh, ten dollars can provide uh, high nutrient peanut paste uh, for a malnourished, malnourished child for ten days. So if you divide by that ten, a single dollar could feed a child for a for a day. So that is amazing. Every dollar counts towards the charity, and we should keep raising that donation counter as high as we can go. Let's go. Got some cool skips right there while you were talking. You talking helps me apparently. <laughs> and I didn't take a, si take a single hit since then. This is really good. Um, uh, da, 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 little water section, nothing really too fancy happening here. 
Uh, right after this, <laughs> we get a little bit of a harder section coming up. Um, and yeah, this uh, this entire second platforming part uh, of the Impossible Air is notorious for its elevator sections. I really hate elevator sections. They are both auto scrollers and sometimes combined with even more stupid stuff like ice physics. I hate ice physics. Nobody enjoys them. Why would you give us auto scrollers with ice physics? Why? Stop. Okay, we jump here, now I'm gonna wait for the next enemy, da -da -da -dum. we just go up this place rather casually, like there's a super fast jet, but I would probably take one or two hits during it, and I'm not willing to take one or two hits for a stupid little trick right now. Um, yeah, this is one of the elevators I don't like, whenever we jump, it stops moving. <laughs> But yeah, this one's actually still okay, apparently. Um, coming up on the icy elevator, <laughs> which is, in my opinion, the hardest part of this um, impossible lair. It also stops when we jump and we have ice physics <laughs> and we have like these saws um, going across the screen rather fast, like you saw there, hey. I was in the ground, but it still touched me. Nice. Uh, nice, we survived that. Now dodging enemies with ice physics and the elevator. <laughs> oh my god, why does this exist? Please stop. Ah, don't hit me. Thank you. Jump through there. As you can see, like sometimes I'll still do like the little easy, uh, speedy strats, but currently I don't go for anything too crazy. Just in order to be able to actually finish this run. <laughs> Skipping that enemy was actually quite risky. I usually take a hit there. Oh wow! Look at me. No, don't look at me. Look at me changing my mind. No, don't. All right, uh, second platforming section done. Third boss coming up, uh, the hardest of the boss fights, which I'm hopefully able to play well <laughs> and not take as many hits as I did in the last boss fight. All right. So we usually can hit him a second time really, really shortly after... Um, he uh, tries to, after we hit him the first time. Okay, that's gonna go to the left, yeah, nice. What? Why did it explode? I don't actually understand that. But that's okay. I'm just gonna keep the bomb and wait for him to throw another one. Because now he goes to the ground. I have the bomb for this next phase here. Now he will fly again. Now I can get an additional hit. I'm gonna hit him in the air here. And then he's moving to the ground again. Nice. We skipped one of his throwing bombs phase this way. Okay, yeah, he does this now. I can get early hits like this. Okay, I can't. Won't try it again. <laughs> Just go for the intentional hits. Oh well, I'll go for the hit. No, I won't. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how you do it. It's really, really hard to get enough height and then be in the falling animation already when he's like stationary there to actually get the hit to count and not take damage. But hey, it worked out, I guess. Next part, I'd love to do way faster than I'm gonna do it now, but uh, I can't. <laughs> I would have to take like three or four damage boosts that I'm not willing to take anymore. Okay, enemy, you stop existing, please. Whew. That was way more clutch than I enjoy it to be. Yeah, like as you can probably imagine from seeing, this section is really hard <laughs> just playing it by itself. Um, 
Okay, yeah, I guess I'll take that then. Skipped a few cycles there. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna try and go for Conveyor Vader. Yeah, didn't manage to do it, but that's not too bad because I didn't fall. Uh, this platform here, we call it Conveyor Vader because it's an elevator and a conveyor belt. How funny. Um, it's actually possible to skip it by getting a delayed troll jump off of that one enemy. But it's quite hard. Yeah, I need to take that damage boost because this section is just too slow if I don't. Um, four Bs for the final fight um, and the final platforming section actually does look pretty alright. That's like two or three less than I would like to have here. Okay, I'm gonna try to roll over here. Nice. That was a fun little extra hit we can take before the fight is even usually supposed to start. Now throw one there. Oh no, wow. Usually he throws one that we can use against him and two bad ones that just roam around and try to attack us. But there he threw, like that was a rather rare chance uh, of him uh, only, like, only throwing one bad bomb there. But hey, he did it. Usually he would hit himself if he would throw it against the wall and then it would hit him. He would like damage himself, that would be fun. But he didn't. Let's take some cool hits here. Okay, didn't get the extra hit there, but that's alright. Okay, I can probably get one here. That was a nice double. Nice. Yeah. Okay, no, didn't go get close enough to him. So let's just take the double head here. Okay, nice. Now he tries to attack us with his homing missiles, but doesn't really succeed. Only one hit. Now he's uh, now he's gonna prepare for his final attack. But look at us. We're gonna use it against him. Bada boom. Oh no, he lost the so-called hive mind that he used to control the bees and now I have it. And I can control the bees. <laughs> Capital B, get wrecked in your own uh, defenses. That was uh, also chop suey. What? Why does why does suddenly System of a Down Chop Suey play? It sounds way too much like it. No one can tell me it doesn't. Uh, yeah, this ending section is a classic escape situation. Capital B destroys the world uh, or like his lair <laughs> at the end of this two minute timer. And we try to escape with the remaining bees we still have. This is the place where we could have taken mean damage, but we didn't. When we go back here, this ground is unloaded. <laughs> what? Like two seconds after we passed it. Also, I only have one more bee left. I don't like that too much, but we're pretty much at the end of the level already. There goes my last bee. I have a track record with losing all my bees in runs in uh, on speedcon. I mean, you you make my oh my god that was. I fell, haha! -ha, but look, we don't die here. Stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> my heart. And this right here. Oh, oh god! Yeah, we don't get hit. And when the screen fades to black, we have time, and we escaped. Three, two, one, time. <laughs> yeah, as you might have realized, um, I don't run this game super actively currently. <laughs> this last part here, the impossible air, is something I was never crazy good at. And now I got even worse. <laughs> but I'm happy I got to pull it off. And I'm happy I was able to show this run to all of you watching in the stream, in the restream, in the crowd, on the couch. Um, thank you for your 
I was awake. Amazing <laughs> awakeness. <laughs> no, it no. was a very entertaining run. I'm going to watch it tomorrow again when I'm actually awake. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it from my side. I was happy to be able to um, show my first out of three runs I have in this event. And I can just tell every one of you, keep those donations for the good cause going. And uh, see you guys tomorrow <laughs> when I'll have a hosting shift and uh, another run. En enjoy Digimon World 3. Exactly, Digimon World 3. Boom. Woo! Well, 